Okay. Okay. Calling to order the June 15th, 2023 uh, meeting of the Historic Resources Commission here in room 111 North Front, sorry, room 204, 111 North Front Street on the second floor. It is now 4.05 p.m. The next business meeting of the commission will be Thursday, July 6th, 2023 at noon. And the next hearing will be Thursday, July 20th, 2023 at 4 p.m. Both of those are here in room 204, or 204 uh, second floor of 111 North Front Street. Swearing in on the staff, Jacqueline, you raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell, tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? I do, Jacqueline Lena. Thank you. And moving on to introduction of commissioners here present this evening, starting on my far left. Mike Ford. Mayda Sinel. Joseph McCabe. And Floyd Henry. Thank you. Uh, are there any items this evening for public forum? Yes, if it's okay with the commission, we're going to move the bylaw update to public forum so my colleague, Kimberly Narashidi, can make that update and not have to witness the whole thing. Okay, great. Thank you. I'd say I'd stick around. I'd be more than happy to, but this will be my third late ish night of the week. So, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Kimberly Narashidi. Um, if you'd like to swear me in, sure. I think you're better safe than sorry. Yep. Do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? I do. Wonderful. Thank you. Right. So I understand Jacqueline has given the preamble. I'm going to make this a little shorter, but I understand you might have some questions. So we are doing a bylaw update focusing on forms for all of the commissions. Uh, HRC's current bylaws regarding quorum state a majority of the members of the Historic Resource Commission Serving at any time shall constitute a quorum. An affirming vote by a majority of the commission members present is necessary for approval of the application or recommendation for a request action commission. We are proposing to change the bylaws regarding quorums to consistent with Columbus City Code section 3119.07. The commission shall take official action only by a majority of the members voting on the question on the table during a public meeting at which there's a quorum. A quorum exists when a majority of the members appointed to and serving on the commission are present at the meeting. When a quorum is lacking, no business can be acted on other than to adjourn a meeting. So do we have any questions? So I, mean, I was gonna say, how is that really different from what we've yeah. been doing? So it directly references city code. Yeah. We're just trying to make all the commissions consistent as well as getting back to that city code reference. So it's so, there. so it's basically the way we currently operate. Yes, some of the other commissions um, had a specific language that was for commissioners. And when you're down to four people on a commission, that can be really rough to get everybody there. So. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And by the way, for the record, uh, Stuart McGivney is also joining us. Hi. Any other questions? Um, okay. Right. Well, then I'm going to ask for a vote. So you have to vote on your bylaws. So we need a motion. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. There are wrinkles in here. And move. And, and is that common though to move from a public forum item though into an actual vote? And is it a vote of recommendation? I believe it's a vote of approval, or at least that's what it has been. Okay. Well, maybe we need a bylaw for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Don't worry. There I just I just want to make sure that because it's a bylaw modification, we're following whatever procedure is was entered into public forum at the moment. I think we're okay. Um, it is you know on the agenda, and then since it's a second reading, it's been on the public notice for you know that particular amount of time or the recommended amount of time. And this would be the second time we're hearing this for us having a hearing. So. I guess uh, at your advice, we would then potentially entertain a motion to adopt the amendment in our bylaws. So moved. So there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> Having a motion and a second, is there any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Well, thank you, and everybody have a good night. You too. Good thank you. Appreciate you. Moving on to uh, the staff approvals for this evening. Um, are you ready for a motion? Uh, I move to uh, approve the staff approvals. 
Okay, there's a motion. Second. Having a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. On to the approval of the minutes from our last meeting, which was May 18th of 2023. I move to approve the minutes. There's a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? And hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Meeting minutes from May 18th, 2023 have been approved. On to this evening's certificates of appropriateness and moving into staff reports. Okay, so starting with application or agenda item number one, this is for 60 West Trenton Place, and this was continued from last, uh, or actually, I think maybe the April period. The proposed work is for demolition of an existing circa 1930s garage, as well as new construction to construct a new one and a half story uh, garage and uh, in its place. So the existing garage uh, may be contributing as indicated on the 1950s, 1960s sampling mapping, and then the 1960s multiple property listing services photo. And so the main house was constructed in either 1929 or 1930. So the garage may be around that time to the construction of the house. So the commission will need to discuss whether demolishing the garage is appropriate. At the June 1st business meeting, the commissioners present note that while normally the garage should have overhangs for the new garage, Overhangs in this instance may be inappropriate as the historic home does not have them. The commissioners present note that they appreciate the attic ban, acknowledging the height of the historic garage, um, following the feedback from the last hearing. And the commissioners present note that they did not have any concerns at that time, but there was not a quorum, um, so the commission would not have been able to move that to staff approval. We're jumping ahead here. Um, so in response to the commission feedback from the May 18th meeting, the applicant has submitted revised drawings of the proposed garage and additional photos and drawings of the existing garage. Um, so staff recommendation, staff recommends continuing application HR 2305020 at 16 West Jeffrey Place to allow time to determine what repairs would be required to get a historic garage into good repair. And that staff recommendation is based on the city code 3106.14 standards for demolition and the standards for new construction 3106.112, as well as the guidelines for garage and high buildings. Great. Is there an applicant here for just in case we have questions? Uh, if you raise your right hand, do you swear to tell the truth or testimony before the commission this evening? I do. If you state your full name and association with the property for record. Brenda Parker, architect. Wonderful. Thank you. Do you want to add anything before we start questions real quick here? Um, I don't think so. I think it was just last month we kind of touched base on the project. So um Okay. So there's this there's the staff recommendation about continuing, but I think so. From what we have seen in the picture and past discussions, um, it seems apparent that this can't be salvaged. Is the staff suggesting we just need it formally, like written out that it can't be salvaged, or find the best way to try to salvage it before we conclude it? On yes, so it's like a matter of find uh, what we need to be, what would it take to repair it and go from there. It, to, I mean, I'm convinced at this point that it needs to go. I mean, uh, we we if if we feel comfortable at this point, we we can just approve it, right? Yeah. Yep. I would just make sure you list the reasons uh, you know, to be reciting code. So, since we have your architect correct, mm -hmm. but would you testify that the structure the structural integrity is compromised on this garage? Most definitely. I think the only way to repair it is to replace it. There we go. I mean, sir, okay. I, I license design for the Yeah. Okay. Health, welfare, life, safety covered right there. I'm convinced. I, I do have a question. We had discussed last month the uh, possibility of putting together sort of an evaluation of what's there, drawings, really good photos, measurements for the file from a historical standpoint. Yeah, I did create the HAB survey. Perfect. Okay. Page one. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we're good. Yeah. I make a motion to approve as submitted. There's a motion. Including demolition. Okay, including demolition. Okay. There's a motion. Second. And a second. 
Is there any further discussion? Do you have a question? Uh, are we only talking about the demolition at this point? Because I think there is a proposed design. Is there anything else that we want to want to design as part of the application? Uh, I, I think the motion is for both the demolition and the construction. Yes. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, that, it, I mean, it, it's, you really did a good job taking the cues with the double doors. I think, um, the slope reads really well off the face of the home. I think it's very kind to the, the structure, 26 ish feet tall. So I think it's going to not be, it's not going to, you know, hide, but I think you're going to see it, which is good. And the band is there, which I think they discussed about putting something in and really dedicate and pay homage to the original structure. So it's really, really, it's basically like the original structure with a roof, right. tall roof. And, and the over and the overhangs match. And yeah, normally we would. One overhangs, but not here. Right. Yeah, I think specifically in the guidelines, it talks about taking cues from the, the main structure, which it seems like we're in alignment with. Mm -hmm. uh, and appreciate as well. Thank you for putting both the existing structure and the garage side by side. That really helps the case. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, uh, the 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 uh, application I think was very restrictive. Yes. All right. I, I'm happy. Okay. Any further discussion? Stewart's looking. I'm no. just okay. Okay, I put a move to the vote. Sure. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to our second application, forty-nine fourteen Molen Sanji Protocol. Okay, so the second um, item, agenda item for 4914, Olentangy Boulevard. This application had been previously reviewed in May of 2022 and then was continued from the September 2022 HRC hearing. The proposal here is to remove an existing door and side lights on the existing sunroom, which would be four openings in total, and to install four salvaged French doors for the submitted photos. The recess trim would match the existing window and door trim on the sunroom. And they would be painting French doors to match the existing front door. So at the June business meeting, the commissioners present noted that they do not have an objection to the overall concept of changing the sunroom windows to doors, but noted that the added thickness of the proposed doors appear out of proportion with the dimensions of the windows on a store at home, and with greater infill than appropriate that appears visually out of place. And so the commissioners noted that the treatment of the added thickness eliminates all of the glass area with the infill. That the current windows on the home have a balance with the ratio of mullions and glass to the windows on the home. And some commissioners asked if the applicant has considered installing perhaps three doors or a sunlight to better fit the opening while maintaining a proportionate amount of infill. And the commission noted that they wanted to be sure that the alteration is in keeping with the original fabric of the house and asked that the drawings indicate where the windows are finished. So the staff recommendation for this application is to recommend continuing application HR 2205028 at 4914 Olentangy Boulevard to allow the applicant time to submit revised materials in response to the commission feedback. And the basis for that is the city code 3116.11, same as for alteration, specifically numbers 1, 3, 6, 10, 11, and 12. You, you are in contact with the, the applicant on this request of time. Oh, uh, with the feedback? Yeah, with with uh, they they want to continue, or? Well, uh, no, this stuff. I'm going to recuse myself from the from this particular application, but I believe that the oh, others okay. in the in okay. the okay. audience. So what? Why don't we? I, I didn't really. Uh, yeah, we'll yeah. swear yeah. in. Yep, yeah. all that good stuff. We still kind of just kind of forward the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? I do. If you could state your full name and association with the property for record. Amelia Jeffers, and I'm the homeowner. Okay, I want Thank you. Okay. <laughs> what would you like to add? Um, we did consider the side light option, but the openings without adjusting the openings, there's no way to add adequate side lights that match the openings on the, the mullions on the windows themselves. And so I have sketches of that if you'd like. I mean, the architect took a shot at it demonstrating why that's not feasible and okay. included it here. And then I guess some of the other feedback was asking that we show where the um, hinges are, but they're shown on that application. They were, they were um, included 
in the drawings that were submitted. And last year, I came in front of you guys really, I think, um, in terms of looking for feedback. And so having done that, you know, the architect that I engaged is Brian Kent Jones Studio, and they looked at it a few different ways. The um, trim, the existing trim around the doors is being utilized here so that the sunroom doors are meant to match the door opening and casing rather than the windows. And I think the feedback from the commissioners was <laughs> relating these to the windows, but we were attempting to make them look different than the windows and to look more like a door opening, which is what they would be. Can we see the drawing? Yeah. Can we? Oh, yeah. Sure. You don't have a do now. We're just a little shy on that opening in order to get skylights that would match the mullion sizes on the doors. I think one of the the general concerns I think was is I because I, I remember when this case came through the first time was is we didn't know what it looked like. I remember the presentation of hey I'd like to use these doors and pull them. We just didn't know what it looked like in the opening, so we saw a drawing. Yeah, we were going to see the drawing. I think one of the concerns I recall about this is sort of there's a certain kind of maybe more gradual and smaller scale, just smaller detailed architecture that exists with the windows. Even on the house as a whole, and then when these doors have these added pieces around, it kind of fattens them up on the the sides and the the, the the styles around all the edges of the door in a way that maybe didn't it sort of feel like it was a little out of character. I guess I look for what the other architecturally minded trade cells mission thing. I. I... I always like to look at everything in the precedence of what we've done before, before, and uh, we've generally not approved a, a a infill or a replacement where the window ends up somewhat smaller. I mean, we, I mean, I'm looking at this and and, uh, and I'm wondering, well, what's the difference between this and someone who wants to put it in a casement window and and says they're going to put a bunch of wood around it, you know, and make the the glass smaller. Uh, is this not almost similar? Um, the 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 French doors themselves, as they exist, with, with, with the very thin uh, like like this this image right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that seems appropriate, but. Was so much build out. It looks like there's almost a more than a doubling of the wood. So maybe the applicant can help explain why is the wood being doubled, and why aren't you keeping the lightness with the glass? So when I came before you last year, your recommendation or the suggestion that was made here was to modify the doors by adding wood to the styles so that they would fit the opening because I'm not allowed to modify the opening, and so that's what we did. And then we looked at alternates in terms of adding skylights to increase the amount of light and that wasn't possible because it's structurally not possible to get a side light that isn't a lot thinner than the windows that are included in the door. If you have three panes going across and then we do a side light, the side light, as you can see in the drawing that I handed you, is significantly smaller. I guess to my mind, I'd look at the front door which has almost entirely wood with three very small lights in it to say that it's not completely unreasonable that there would be some amount of wood framing around the windows on a door rather than windows. We're not looking at, you know, windows. These will be operational doors. And my front door is almost entirely wood. Yes, 
Yeah, I'll give us. Yeah, um, we did. We did uh, suggest that you might add wood. I guess we're a little shocked at the amount. I guess we were thinking like just have three to fit of an inch. I know we have to fit the opening. If it, it's math, you know, it's not my choice. It's really the math of the opening. Um, it, the only maybe saving grace of the whole thing, as we think about what we're doing here too, though, is really this was a. Is my understanding this was a screened porch with openings and so the windows and the knee wall below the windows are not even original they're not as is correct <laughs> so, so i do do want to kind of always remember yeah. that yeah. so if, if this modification were to go forward would it actually result in the loss of any historic material the answer would be no oh. okay and, and i think that's a valid argument so the second piece of that is, let's say the request was right now to remove the screen and put in the doors and or windows or something. And we've allowed that before. Okay? Right. I mean, to be consistent, we have often allowed people to fill in their, their, their screen porches. And, and historically, like there were lots of sleeping porches or screen porches that have been infilled over decades. Right. I mean, sometimes even within 10 years of some of these homes, we right. that just has a pattern. So, if it helps you, my back door is actually a 1980s door, so, so it's pretty horrible <laughs> and in terrible condition. We're definitely not losing any historical integrity by removing that. So, so, so the question is, if this were screened in porch, would we accept these? You know, if the existing windows weren't there, and you know, we're just looking at a screened in porch, and someone said we want to put in these doors. Would we let's, let's finish on the like wood. How are we gonna what were the final colors? So match the front door. Match Everything the was indicated on the application to match the front door in terms of the trim around the doors and the paint and um when the wood is added to the sides. Although I love the color of the wood, I'd love to keep it. I understand we'd want it not to be um differentiating from the rest of the architecture. So we would paint them to match the front door. This is where I'm having a little bit of a hard time understanding the applications. Um, you go to page three, and this might be dated, right? It is, yeah. Okay. But I, this image seems to be indicating this is a new drawing from your architect. Is that right? This image is dated. It's a it's a drawing from a year and a half ago. Year and a half. Yeah, okay. and not from this architect. Understood. Yeah. Okay. It, it just seems like the scale and material of that door is misrepresenting the actual. Yeah. There's a, there are no in in fact when this was submitted it was submitted by Jones Studio I didn't know they included that drawing they didn't okay. draw it but it's not to scale I right. think it's just to generally demonstrate the concept. Because what I like about this particular drawing, and maybe it's neither here nor there, because we've already established it's not right. It seems as though the material and size and scale is appropriate to the rest of the detail of the house. To be fair, I'm not sure from the street there's going to be that much distinction between the amount of wood that we're adding on the sides of these doors. Right. It seems like a fairly minute, you know what I mean, relative to the condition of the material that's on it today. Right. And what I'm replacing it with, and the historic nature of the doors that I'm using, that we're modifying them slightly. I recognize that we have to add some amount of wood to the sides, but again, I'm not. I, and I recognize that I can't, to code, change the openings themselves. So there aren't many choices. Right. I I do have kind of a crazy idea. I ask you to go back to the. PDF page two, and I'll walk up here real quick, just because I think I'm reading dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, <clears throat> this tells me that you have a 83 inch opening that has an 81 clear, and that these existing doors are 20, 26 inches, if I'm reading that correct. 26 and something, seven eighths okay. or something, so almost so 27. Would not three of these potentially fit per opening? One, two, and a third one, and you can leave the center one fixed, and then that way you don't even have to tap on the wood. 
So instead of two sides, you know, one in the middle. Yeah, would you be okay so with I'm, I'm pretty sure that the math doesn't work, but if you want to blow up well, the measurements and. If it's 26, though, times three. But it's not. Match open, it's 26 and something. It's like 26 right. and seven eighths. You can also trim a little bit. Right, but I, uh, that's exactly it. I was thinking by the time you just trim a little bit, because you leave the center one. Possibly. Fixed. I don't have another set of doors. So then we have to figure out how do we manufacture doors that are going to match these that are going to, I mean, possibly. It could be possible to match what I mean. You guys tell me the top of it to match. I, I mean, the, the given is you're working with what eight eight recycled doors basically. Correct. Right. Okay. And the salvage guy doesn't have any more. Not that I know of. I could okay. certainly ask the question, yeah. but I was ba going based on the recommendation that was made here, and so working within those parameters, this is what we came up with. <laughs> but it's, does it seem like work? Um, and yeah, I was going to say, say it, to me, it seems like if I can't imagine that the three and three quarter extra inches on each side of these doors are going to change the historical integrity of Old Beach Wall, which I love, but I'll defer to you. Well, the, the one thing I think you do have going here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working really hard to convince myself of this thing. I appreciate that. Is that if, if these were windows and you were putting that much wood around that, the answer would be no right off. Right. You know, is the fact that because they're doors, does that make a difference? And again, looking at it in terms of if this were a screened in portal and you came and right now you can say that I'm putting in these doors and so we're have no vision of the way it's looking with all the windows and the light and so that now uh, would we would we be willing to to do it because we have to you know we always have to approach that and and how does that set precedence and probably not a lot is allowed well usually press for windows I, I can't remember another one that they wanted all doors but if we had another one that came along they wanted all doors um i guess we would approve it um we don't really have a standard for how much last we need to have in the door i mean the only thing i'll say is again i'll defer to the rest of you but um because the two doors all seem neat and it's going to be a dark color so you're not just going to read the one band you're going to read double the band yeah so in the middle it's going to be really dark and heavy it, it, so think about it. I guess I have another question for you. If I came in front of you and I was going to replace the existing windows, would you approve replacing the existing windows with the amount of wood, the paneling that is underneath them today? If you go back to the existing picture of what my house has right there. So if I came for you, because my windows need replaced, ultimately, <laughs> that's the whole point here. And so if I came before you and I wanted to replace the windows and I said, I'm going to go back in with these exact windows with the wood infill underneath the way that it sits today, would you approve that? So under code, it says that if it's an existing condition, we have to work with you on an existing condition. I mean, I'm improving the amount of light into that room significantly and the amount of light to the, you know, as you're looking at the house from the street, it's going to be more window than wood than exists today. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's the interesting point. It, because it actually, it, it, it's going to increase the vertical in there. Um, yeah, I the color image. And, and, and I guess we can kind of look at, at the darker color as the kind of an infill block between the <laughs> budget columns. And so we'll kind of read as a, as, you know, like, where the door is currently, I mean, that's uh, a little clumsy. Uh, so it would probably read as, so, but it reads as dark. I, I go back to, so I, I look back at what my original comments were to you when you brought it in. One was we need to measure drawings because this exact thing I was afraid was going to happen. The second, well, I went back to my original comment was what if there's an opportunity here to mimic what is happening around the front door? And when I meant to that, I do want to kind of go back to you. Let's go to page seven. And 
just for your thought, which is zooming out just a little bit more. Well, well, you know, what, we what caught me, what was different about this house is that these trims don't actually sit up on the jam. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a space, a strip around the whole thing. And is there a case for leaving space around the opening here? Mm -hmm. If you're going to tie something in, just because there was a very layered scenario that you don't see in many houses where normally this trim is just sitting right outside the frame. Um, and that, that extra little stucco strip doesn't exist. So I'm just thinking like, is this, a, is this, could we get there by actually sort of, maybe the idea is you don't put as much wood around the edge of the, by tacking as much wood around the door. I, I I understand what you're saying, but what I'm thinking is the precedents that we're setting. Okay. And then it, Down, it, downsize. Yeah, then, then how do we tell the next person yeah. that you can't downsize it? Yeah. And we can say, well, because we look at the front door, but I, I, okay. I'm, I'm more willing to sort of approve it the way that it's it's submitted. Um, it's It's probably not, um, you know, because it, it certainly wouldn't be my, my favorite design, but it's not up to my personal likes or dislikes. I'm trying to figure out, does it meet the minimum requirements for what we're doing? And kind of looking at it in terms of what we've done before, what we're going to do in the future. Uh, these are doors, they're not windows. so. We, we we don't we're not matching jams and things. Uh, the windows that are being replaced are not the original windows, and so she's replacing doors infill for a screen porch. Right, that had a full top to bottom opening already. So you yeah, lost with like the knee wall underneath the windows. The, the, that was not even that wasn't an original right. view right. anyway. So. So, so we're really looking at the size of the original opening. She's filling the size of the original opening with doors that we now don't particularly like, however, because of the because of the the relationship. But but still, the, I'm feeling but like you do, get, still, you do get the original screen porch back once you open all the doors. You, you this do. is what I'm trying to achieve. You do. Thank you for recognizing you know, what I'm trying to achieve. Right, you, you do, but, but I'm, I'm thinking she's probably within. She's she's probably with minimally within acceptable. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be setting any really bad precedences. We wouldn't right. be doing anything. There's no loss of historic fabric. There's no loss of historic fabric. Um, it's it, she's filling in the original opening. I think that's a big point in, in in your favor that you're not changing the opening size. So I, I'm I could I could I could go with it. Maybe uh, Jacqueline, if you could tell us, uh, remind her, reiterate why you were suggesting continuing. Based on the commission feedback, uh, the commission had you know, good points made at the business meeting and related to the house, making sure everything is compatible um, as far as those uh, opening lines for windows and doors. And then so that relates back to the answer alteration, which I believe was the commission was thinking that case. You know, most money is this not a black and white issue, so I'll leave it up to the commission. But that was why the um, recommendation was to continue. So it's purely on the feedback, not not any gold. Well, so I you know not thinking that the feedback is arbitrary. Anything is yeah, yes, yeah. but it's on our feedback. So it's yeah, yeah. alteration. I, I think the, the taste being a little bit in that gray area, like we're talking about, uh, a couple of things that I'm looking at is the um, you know, so the guidelines talk about no excessive decorative features that aren't in alignment with the original historic structure. I think. We can check that box. There's mm -hmm. there's nothing really that's departing style wise. Uh, we are matching the painting scheme. I think that's going to probably tie it in. Maybe we are returning it closer back to its original uh, function. So we can check that box. What I'm not thrilled about is the scale and proportion. But well, that's what I think we're all. But, yeah. that's, maybe that's uh, 
Is that so, personal taste? And we can't let our personal taste enter into the decision. Right. I, I guess we were looking at replacing this in Windows, which could go off of the approved window list, right? Um, it, and and so the the actual look of the window might change a little bit compared to what it is. Re re replace a non-original window with a window that never was. Yeah. So so I guess. Yeah, we are talking about window to door, so maybe that shifts a little bit, but yeah, it makes it too I, I think I could be convinced for all those reasons that we aren't losing historic fabric here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Make a motion uh, for HR 2205-428-4914 on Tangi Boulevard. Um, the motion is to approve the application as presented. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, having a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. I'm going to go on record actually as abstention because I was not as compelled on this. But motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to case number 3697 South Champion Avenue, if there is an applicant for it at this time. Do you want to raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? Yes, sir. If you uh, could give us your full name and association with the property for record. Francis Michael Curley, property owner. Great, thank you. Jack. This application uh, is for 697 South Champion Avenue. Uh, the application is result of code violation. So the proposal here is for a variance recommendation request uh, for section 3332.26, which involves the minimum side yard. And so they'd be reducing that minimum side yard um, and requesting a variance for that. Uh, the proposal is also to retain a new garage, uh, which has been constructed. And let's see, go down and down. Okay, so the building and zoning, I know that they need to see dimensions of the interior of the garage to confirm the size. Uh, they noted that it does not appear the interior will accommodate an 18 by 18 foot parking area, uh, which is required for a two part garage. So a building zoning variance may be needed for the parking space if it is less than the nine by 18, uh, following that code for 3312 and then for the other component, the detached garage needs to be at least three feet from the north property line. And so the applicant is requesting a variance for that uh, particular code to reduce the garage side yard from three feet to two feet. And so a single story gable garage was constructed at the rear of the 697 South Champion property prior to review and approval or building permit. The garage as constructed has some exterior cladding and detailing differences from what's typically approved. And that includes like the wood shake style house foam roofing shingles, and that the shingles are capped um, with shingles instead of metal ridges, and that there's a faux wood grade siding texture instead of a smooth or brush finish siding, and that the tree trim detailing typically there's a one by six lintel trim at the overhead garage door, and that trim at the sides would be one fourth. Um, the siding does extend to the ground level, covering the foundation, and then the concrete apron extends beyond the garage at the south elevation and then circling around to the person door at the east elevation. Uh, there is a single wide garage door in this location that may be accessible due to the narrowness of the alley. Adjacent garages appear to have a single wide overhead door as well, and this may also be due to the alley, the narrow alley there. So based on preliminary Building and zoning feedback, an additional variance may be required for the parking area size as constructed. And so the applicant will need to confirm um, any additional zoning variances that may be needed for the building and zoning. At the June 1st business meeting, the commissioners noted that they will need to see the rationale for the single wide garage door, such as documentation of the alley size. You know, if the alley size is the reason for the single wide, the two garage doors. The commissioners asked to confirm what the overhang dimension is as built. And noted that some materials, such as the simulated wood vinyl siding, is unlikely to be approved. The commission asked about the garage door floodlight, noting it appears off center, and asked that the applicant submit a close up photo or cut sheet of the east entry door. So, in response to the commission feedback, the applicant has submitted a uh, close up of the entry door and the dimension for the overhangs. 
And the staff recommendation is to recommend continuing application HR 230501 at 46 per 697 South Champion Avenue to allow the applicant time to confirm all their required variances and to review the commission feedback. The basis for the staff recommendation are the HRC guidelines for garages and L buildings, as well as the standards for new construction, city code 316.112. And that is it, Mr. Lambert. Thank you. Is there anything additionally the applicant like that? So, I did a contractor that uh, was kind of dishonest with me and went ahead and built it. I thought there was a COA and a, a permit for it. Um, so, I'm kind of left to deal with this from another state. I actually don't even live in Columbus anymore, so I had to come back from Kentucky to deal with this. Uh, so, as far as I understand, the interior parking. Had is at least 18 feet across. Uh, it was a little bit unclear if he was talking about both uh, interior and exterior parking. So if the exterior is a parking issue also, it's the same as uh, all the other garages right around it. Like everything is the same. Um, offset from the alley, single door, uh, and then all the other garages on the street that are new built that have been approved that have would look final siding. There's only um, one that has hardy board that's flat and one that has siding that's flat and then one that has a, a like a wood look synthetic. Uh, but by at least a three to one ratio for all the new build garages, they're all wood and print vinyl siding. So um, a little bit concerned why it's a different standard than all the, I mean, it's just like all the other garages. Um, so we can we can kind of take these all as sort of right. steps here. Today I went around and took an inventory of all the garages, and I, I didn't. There's seven streets in Old Oaks, um, so it's like seven by two. I didn't get uh, all the way to the center because I ran out of time. But by by more than three to one, it's all the new garages are going all like wood look vinyl siding. Ones that I know have been signed off on. Uh, it has been to deal with with this is kind of dragged on and I'll take responsibility for some of it, but there's like a. I can't hit a, a moving target. With some of the stuff uh, Connie wouldn't even respond to my emails for like a year and I have all this. Like uh, a record of it. I just want to get this done so I can sell this house so I can not be in Columbus anymore. It's exactly like all the ones right around it. Uh, that alley, the next alley there. I mean, it's, it's just like all of them. Um, and I know everybody else didn't have to. Do all of this for it. So help me help you help me get this result, please. Well, we'll 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 take pieces of this at a time. First of all, we cannot speak for your neighbors. So on the on the comparison of siding. So other projects I've done. Hold, hold on. Which is which is there are we go through an approval process. If they've dishonestly not installed the correct material, we cannot, you know. We cannot help what they've done. Uh, we only know what we've approved if it was approved here at this body and usually generally approved for a reason. If you've got neighbors that violated something, that's just a code violation. We we can't, you know, help that you may have a property next door that it could have been before it was a district. <laughs> um, it can also be outside of the district. Um, so the siding issue, you know, that that could be a hit or miss depending on where the address of the property is and what the circumstances are, depending on the year. I think the, the garage was constructed. I think that's also a critical it thing. Sounds like talking about new build garages. It could, in, in, in the district. Yeah, and similar in, age of construction because the district actually was. I think I mean I can't remember the exact amount of original subdivisions because there's a couple of stragglers on both extreme yeah. orders. Okay. I think there was maybe nine. But original subdivision. So old oaks is a modern designation with no. There's nothing historical about the de about the boundary that they chose. But they chose a boundary. So if you may get a garage that's say across the alley, that's not a district. So I'm, I'm only brought the exact like for like two. Okay. Years. Okay. And and and, and if, if you think those are code violations, then please report them. No, I think that it was. I think that the the move to smooth just recently kind of happened because I know no. what's, other ones that I've been a. That I've had approved personally, that I've either done or done a joint venture with, that was what was allowed. Yeah, signed off on in the past. Everyone that has come to the HRC for as long as I've been on this, which is same thing. 
Smooth and the bed. Well, you've been on <clears throat> the longest. Have you ever approved a? So uh, we're, we're we're trying to keep everything the same. All the garages are wood look vinyl siding. I mean, I, I documented it today in in the same neighborhood. Yeah, it, 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 if you think they have violated the building code, please turn them in. So we As have a we have had a few things that are similar in this this situation, and and I think ultimately. It's not about what has happened and what's going to happen, but maybe let's find a solution for you. That's all I'm trying to do. So, so some of the things like changing the siding, not a big deal. You know, you get a smooth, but the corner trim is in. One of the big things is is your your narrow lot line, and that's a that's a fire thing. So, you know, that's that's that can be remedied through you know perhaps methodology of reducing fire, whether that is you know some sort of a fire sealant on the material behind the siding. I'm not sure. But well, it's, it's also a variance request, so be, be aware that we only recommend variance. We do not approve variance. That's a whole other body. hundred percent. I've been talking to, uh, so there's, there's layers to this is what I'm getting. I, I get it. Uh, yeah. Can we clarify, is the is there an apron issue? From what you read, it, I couldn't tell if there's just an apron issue or an interior apron issue. Feedback from zoning, the only feedback was interior. the setback and then the actual garage yeah, space. So the because it says 18 by 18 and it says 9 by 18 and I just wasn't sure if we're talking about two. I, I guess, I guess, you know, even before we are able to clarify that, do you have documentation of what you have? Because I have, I think that's one of the things that we don't have here tonight is site plan. any site yeah. plan that shows us what is the apron, what is it measured? There's, there's a little thing, thing, but I don't know about yeah. the scale or, you know, that sort of thing. So there's exactly 18 feet of interior pad space for parking. Okay. And so a zoning issue on the size of the inside of the garage is not an item for our body. No, I get it. So, so I'm, I'm, let me, that I'm, I'm excluding from the list because I verified it. Okay. Uh, I just want, I couldn't tell if, if there was a, from what you just read off, could, I'm confused about if there's just an interior parking issue or if there's an exterior parking issue too. Because there's two different dimensions that you cite. Uh, as far as I'm aware, zoning only was referring to the interior portion of the garage, right. the garage itself is so the three foot versus two foot boundary is the biggest issue that uh, as far as the variance, how do we deal with that with HRC? We, we are we are if this body is amenable, we can make a recommendation to support a variance, but we okay. don't you'll have to go through the variance process, which is not our I have been it's uh it's a lot too. It's complicated. Uh, I just wanted to make sure this is the one that's really Railroaded me because I have some issue with the different standard for me and for all the other houses. I was just having hours I get my head around that. So variance aside, though, we also have to look at just the garage itself, right? As if it's yeah. were coming to uh, us for approval for the look and feel and the historic fabric and all that. Um, so maybe we can look at that too. One hundred percent. But the, if we can approve the. The side variants, and then we can go back to yeah. battling about the siding. Yeah, and I was saying we again, we, we won't be approving it. We might just have a recommendation. Okay, sorry, well, yeah. And even if we make a recommendation, and they don't like it. They're still going to say go. Cool. So yeah, part of probably this this path we can we can talk about like the siding right. and the light and the overhangs and some of those things, but. As far as that goes, that's a whole separate piece that maybe you might want to consider looking with those guys. I did that, but you guys have to sign off on it first before we can go anywhere with them. For the variance, we have to make or anything it. kind of for uh, current or anything. Well, why don't we break this up to like an A, B, C, D type of mm -hmm. thing? Oh, okay. And uh, so we'll do A as a recommendation for the variance. Now we're going to be talking about it. We can say yes or no and move on. So the first, I think the easy one is the 18 by 18. Or, uh, in the or, or, I don't even know if that's what it is. I don't know. On the interior. Why don't we do the variance first? Because if we don't recommend the variance, there ain't, the there ain't nothing going to happen. <laughs> He's going to have to tear it down. So, so let's so let's let, let's do that one first. Um, oh, how do we do this? You're good at this. Um. So in the, let me ask you this, is there any historical Sanborn maps that show a garage this tight to the law line? Yeah, it, uh, it was. Uh, I think about what you're about to say. Yeah, I am. Um, okay. 
it was because that would probably help quite a bit with, today. with the existing pad. Um, I'm trying to think what I could reference quickly to, to support that. And I don't know if it would be a quick thing, but this may be a good thing. Give me one second. Do you, to, do you know, did they build this garage? So, I mean, you see for the for the city's mapping, that's not this garage in question. Look at the way the garage is in the number slide. E. One more time. Uh, so Are you speaking about the auditors? Correct. Anything included in there? Um, so it shows your neighbors ghosting and then it has the red line around your lot line. Is that the page you're talking about? Yes. This, this guy, this one up here. Uh, yes. Okay. So that's. Can we blow that up just a smidge? What what year was your house built roughly? Just guess. 92, 1892. Okay. That should be right on. Okay. So all I was simply saying was maybe if you look in the historical maps, if there was an existing graph, which you believe there was. So look how close the uh the house is to the house beside it. So there's a there's a couple instances in I think that's Dora Falkenbach's addition is what the actual subdivision was, uh, where there's either a shared or two properties share a garage. Two separate properties have the same like a garage that touches. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the front of this one, if you look at the house beside it, 693, there's not three feet between uh, the the Third floor of the two houses. True. And we can't talk about the houses. We can't talk about anything else mm -hmm. other than. So it seemed, it, I mean, it, it looks like, look how close, look how their garage has the property line, too. Sure. But again, so that's the historic standard. I appreciate it. But, but all I'm saying is if, if we had some evidence that, you know, that was existing, I thought that may support more of this variance. I don't know, but it's supposed to be the existing um, pad <laughs> that he poured on. Like some of the answers I got, like I was out of state and some of the answers I got from my contractor that did it turns out I can't take them all. I, I mean, I can't trust one hundred percent to convey that information to you guys. Okay, it was, it was, yeah, just a quick back. second. I believe that all right, right. It, some of our staffs going to take a look at this. Oh, check real quick. Just for clarification, um, your your contractor did not get a permit at all. Turns out now. Okay. That's that's what we thought. I just wanted to make so. Sure. This was actually a, a contractor that has done. Yeah. Okay. That, that was my question. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a motion so that we can keep on the topic. Uh, HR, uh, or I move that we uh, approve uh, for HR 2305 uh, uh, 697 South Champion Avenue, or make a recommendation uh, in support of a variance. For the setback lot, line. Setback setback lot line. Thank you. Okay, so that's the only thing we're discussing, and that's part A of this particular thing. Then we're gonna, we're going to do a part A, and then multiple letters, so we can kind of get through this thing. And so now we can open it up. I'll second that. Okay, so now we have a little more discussion. Yeah, uh, she's checking the sample line, so I'm just thinking. <laughs> As far as the precedence goes, I, we have approved some of these in the past. There's usually been a reason if it, if uh, if uh, we're 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 just making a recommendation. If there's an issue, they will not do it. But he's he's gonna in order to even even for him to present it, he has to at least get our approval on it. Um, figuring it out. I, I feel like a number of these accessory structures in backyards are sitting even on property lines. I am, I am, I don't believe the historical context of the neighborhood has been altered with a granting of a variance. Yeah. And and even if this variance is granted, the structure next door, immediately adjacent to it, is not historic either. So I don't believe any current historic conditions even impact it. Yeah, yeah, because we're asking for Okay. I'll share. <laughs> no, I'll just, no. <laughs> it's not a motion. No, no, we already have a motion. I say, okay. Okay. We have a motion. <laughs> 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 Get the board up. 
is, is, okay. Great. Call the question. So having a, a motion and a second. Be nice to our chair. Is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion passes. Okay, so you got your recommendation on that. Now, you guys want to do the pad next? Okay. Um, okay, on uh, HR 23 05 021, uh, 697 South Champion Avenue, uh, uh, I uh, recommend the approval of part B. Uh, approval of the exterior concrete parking pad is that what we're talking about because we're not there's really nothing to discuss on, on the I mean interior uh, well the only thing with the interior would be because if we if we part of our job is to approve the garage right right, right. And if the proportion is impacted by okay. that interior so, well we'll get to the third piece of the right the result that right. if it's too big because because we normally don't approve the pad separate from the garage, right. so because it's common floor, right? that's a that's kind of a confusing issue. But we do look at the pad separate. Yes. Oftentimes. So maybe we do split it just for the sake of because the mount there is right. Yeah. So so let's just look at the exterior. Okay. This is B. This is B. Just the exterior pad. So yeah, that that's the current motion. And so I second. Okay. Good. But Having a motion and a second. <laughs> now to discuss. So, so any any further discussion? I mean, I again, I look at the the pad probably doesn't actually create any historical issues. I did look at the Google image that drops the Google man drops right actually into the alleyway, looking at the the concrete pad sitting right here, and the gate across it. Prior to this. Yeah, it could even, I don't know if you want to bring it up. I mean, it's just it's plain as day when you look on there. I never got to see that former garage. Right there, was Sam. That's that's it right there. We're looking at that's that's the pad. Okay. okay. Uh, it's, this is like the same size pad from most. Of right. <laughs> oh, oh. You probably don't know how wide your alley is. We we could leave a lot. I mean, it looks it's like where the it's placed. It's right pretty much where the front of the garage is, which is in line with the garage next door. Which okay, I'm convinced. Yeah. Wait, is the pad wrapped around inside? Is that part of it? There's a walkway around the side of the house, or I'm sorry, around the side of the. Um, that was also constructed as part of this project. Correct. To me, that's a bit of a concern. The outside pad. Is that? Okay. I guess I'm I guess not concerned because this is just modern living. Like, who wants to walk on the grass? There's supposed to be flowers there. They uh, were not permanent flowers, and they they need to be. I think need flowers, but they're supposed to be like a decorative because it, along the fence there's um, lilies, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's supposed to be like ornate. We, we, we've approved sidewalks before, even with steps in. Yeah, it's not it's a sidewalk. It's just concrete. Kind of yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm there with the pad. Okay. 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 We have a motion and a second to approve the, the, the pad. Any further discussion? And that's the pad, including the sidewalk? Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Just yes. Clarify. Second. Okay, so the, the motion has been amended and the second order agrees. So all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention, and the pad part is approved. Now let's talk about the garage. Okay. My machine's going to come up. There we go. Okay, so I think we can do this all, the rest of it all, let's see. I think we're we'll okay. Okay, um, HR 2305-021-6. Oh, uh, 97 South Champion Avenue. Uh, I move to approve the uh, garage as as uh, presented. Uh, well, you, you always have to. Yeah, so in the second. Uh, yeah, you always yeah. have to do it in the affirmative to start with. So the, there's a motion and a second. I, I think this warrants some discussion, at least. Like Absolutely. Second. second. All right, let's discuss yeah. it. Okay. There are okay. Um, looking at this, there are a number of things that I'm saying. Uh, the, uh, how how far did we in? You know, honestly, I I that was on my list, and I did not. Okay. Did it not it looks like it might be less than a foot, might be ten inches. I'm willing to overlook that because it's it, it's it just it, 
it still has the same sort of feel that we kind of love with the old grant. I think the main issues are the subtle, the, the, the bottom siding, we have never approved uh, a wood grain, and we have always insisted on the corners being wood. And then the other issue is we generally have the foundation exposed. Um, those are the three main things that I, I see. I, I see a, even a bigger issue. We've got non deforming shingles and no ridge roll. Okay. And then those are That's, the things that we, we have root cases all the time where that is not accepted, and we have a, we do not have an acceptable shingle. Okay. What's, what's the shingle on there now? I don't know. I hit it with a piece of ridge roll and the mentrala today. Oh, it did the mentrala. I, it's, it's, yeah. the, it's the shingle that doesn't even come off of our pre approved list. That's like 25 B or that one's clean. So. Oh. If you use the shingle from the approved list, which would probably been less expensive. 310. And then you would have had a problem. Right. Um, you're telling me this is somebody I also did a deal with and sold them five houses in the same neighborhood uh, where they've. You know, they're working on all my multifamilies from this neighborhood. They, this contractor was a part of the group where I ended up getting done kind of dirty overall. Uh, I mean, you may have an issue with your contractor for not getting a permit. I can't advise you. If not. No, I, uh, I get that. Uh, but in terms of what's around there, uh, the shingles on, put the right shingles on, put the right shingles on, put the siding on, we're done. Yeah, that's right. So, otherwise, what's the precedent? Either that's the same thing. Yeah, I, I just don't care for the precedent that gets set by the yeah. I, I, I agree because the way we have to approach <laughs> a built project is we have to ask ourselves the question, would we approve this? Had it come to us this way? And we would not. I think it would have made a few recommendations and it would have been fine. Yeah, but, yeah. But we're not that far off. A few little things, a few little things. Can I hit it with their chapter ridge and so on the roof? New shingles and ridge cap, get rid of that door and change the site. We'll put it all out in a, in a motion and it'll make it really easy. That's it. So here's my issue is mm -hmm. that I know that. Nope. So you can't, we're trying to keep a like uh, housing stock. So the, what I'm showing is it, a like housing stock. Here. Just keep that in mind. Okay. The, the other thing we can do is it's build up it. I, I have a feeling that. So can I introduce a couple more facts, please? Because like uh, 692 champion, 696 champion, 730, uh, 734 champion, all have new, newly constructed garages with final siding. Sir, that's irrelevant to your issue. Please turn those people in if you feel like there's an injustice here. Right. Uh, we can't justify something because somebody else has done it just like but we're trying to keep a housing inventory but, but if somebody else did it without a and or approval right that's what i'm saying is that the whole right. of the uh so turn those people in and then you will have a consistency of the neighborhood that you're saying that you want that's irrelevant please don't bring it up again but yeah it's, it's like three to one or four to one yeah we, we can only uh i think we should vote i yeah. call the question Let's call it said, this is discussion. There was already a motion. Yeah. No, yeah. But, but we have a motion, but but uh, I, I'm ready to vote. You ready to vote? Yeah. Is the applicant amenable to proposed changes? We we hold on. Just so uh, I mean, I, I'm not trying to upset him by continuing to hard like to try to support um, my case, but the the whole goal here is to create uh, uh, keep the there's uh, one question for you. One so question. We have it at, uh, so one question, one question, one question. Please listen to me. Are you willing to replace the siding to put on the corners and wood to put the shingles from the specified uh, list and the uh, uh, ridge row on um, and replace the door and expose the foundation, or are you not? Additionally, if you don't want to answer, we can continue this case until next time. You didn't have the time to and do hemorrhaging it. money on this house. Um, or we can vote now. So, I mean, I, I would ask that you vote now. I think I'm going to get shot down. Uh, I just I don't understand if, if we're if there's been 
29 new garages constructed and it was it's not a planning well, argument that you're making if we have guidelines that we need to follow and it's nothing uh, about your particular case it's we need to look at the guidelines it, is, it, has, to be, it has to be fairly but that's why okay. it forces to go to the city so yes yeah. well I, I, I think as the chair i'm going to close the discussion on this now so just okay, so the city's in federal court so now because they got sued all those in favor say aye or, opposed I uh, abstention motion fails. So now so I do the uh, yeah. yeah. And then specifically for 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 enter in a record the reasons for the the, the failing of the motion. So if I agree to the door, uh, that's a, that's the big door. Uh, new siding. The, the the man door, but um, the man door. I thought the man door was okay. I thought it was the big no, door. It's the, it's the garage door. We thought we were about the big door. Single large. Yeah. We have a single large garage door. Yeah. We can have a big post up. Okay. He, so so I've already got it done. Yeah. You got to come back next month. You, you wanted to vote, you got to vote. So I didn't, I guess I didn't understand that I couldn't. Uh, I mean, if I disagree to do everything you just said, then what's the issue? Uh, but you didn't agree. We, we just went you called for a vote. We you failed. We submit the application. So I guess I didn't understand that wasn't clear to me since we weren't allowed to finish. We we, we asked you if you wanted to to seek the vote and you, you asked for that. Uh, I believe one time I said that because I don't think it's gonna pass. I, I oh I wasn't clear. I mean I'll be happy. I mean I'm not gonna be happy to, but I will I will willingly do those things to get this over with so we're not wasting everybody okay, else's time. Submit and uh resubmit the application. And we'll take it up again next month. I, 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 what I would ask is that if the applicant works with staff to address staff that, staff if I do it, can we do that? Is that reasonable? Sorry, sorry, speaker. We could take it up for the next. We meeting. would consider that our next business meeting, which is the first week of July, which is in the key, you know, I announced what the dates were. Um, if that complete package is in with the correct shingle identified, the ridge roll retail, the siding identified correctly, all those things identified. Staff can then ask us to consider if it's a complete application to move it to staff approval at that point. We just we do need a quorum for that's correct. Yeah. And I know it's a holiday weekend. If um does it sound like we might have a quorum for that just for the applicant's preparation? Yeah. I don't I don't know. We don't know, but yes, that would be part of it. Yeah, that has to be a quorum. Can I verify one more thing? So it's exposed foundation, ritual, proper shingle. Right now, you have a you have a garage door that did not comply as well, but we have to hear a reason and rationale for why you've got what you have. Yes, for the single. Yes. The other ones are singles. I, I think you need to show us some dimensions on a drawing that show maneuverability issues. Uh, so, in in light of the vote that was just uh, called from the Seco Chapter Three One One Six Point One Two Standards for New Construction Letters F H I. Uh, J three one 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 six or three one one six N and and that will be, be provided to you. So okay. part of this is you know it, it's pretty lengthy, but those are the letters within the code that describe this you know the, the materials used, um, the type of doors, those sorts of things, mm -hmm. um, and also in keeping with the uh, standards for the area as well. But more importantly, you'll get that whole list. But in, you know, I think you're understanding the significance of, you know, the small list of things we needed to get this done. I wish we could have came to that before the vote, which is fine. But talk to staff. Maybe there's a way we can reintroduce this next month with those proposed changes, with with a drawing, right? Because we have to substantiate if you want to keep the double door, and if it, if there's a narrow alleyway, that's one reason that it would be. Appropriate to have a wider single door. So I guess here's where I'm confused is I, on all the other projects that I've had approved, we did a single door. We, we, we are, we are not here to debate your other projects. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, but, but, projects. Um, at some point. That's, that's, that's so the, yeah, we, we've given you the information to staff. I think you kind of have an idea of what we need. And if, if you're kind to staff, they may help you a little more than, than just give you the code and that sort of thing. So I guess at the very end, I'm confused. Are we okay with staff approval? If I do exactly what was just we we, we we do not pre-authorize a staff okay. approval. We we do not know what your application is going to look like. So if it was done by the business meeting, there's things we just discussed. 
We will look at it at the business meeting and right. decide. We, we, we are city, what are you? By law, we cannot tell you whether we're going to approve something or not at a, at a future right. meeting. Right now, we just don't, we don't have anything in front of us. Do you, so. do you have staff's uh, email? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. I'd, I'd recommend maybe if you take a minute and, you know, you, did you jot down the things we spoke about? Correct. Okay. That would, that would be a start if you want to make sure we have those things listed to, to modify your, your application that didn't pass. And then we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Moving on to case number four, two twenty three West Beach Bowl Boulevard. If you could raise your right hand, do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? Yeah. If you could state your full name and association with the property for record. Gail Mahaffey, owner. Wonderful, thank you. Again. Jack. This application from two twenty three West Beach Bowl Boulevard is for landscaping. The proposal is to replace the pine tree removed by the city, a damaged seven foot hemlock tree, and four boxwoods. And those would be replaced with five seven foot spark juniors to create a privacy screen. So, the June business meeting, the commission, uh, commissioners present noted that they would like to do some research regarding the proposed plant species, just not being familiar at that time. The commissioners present noted that they do not have concerns at that time and that the, uh, the forum was not um, meant to be able to take action on the application. And move to staff at the business meeting. However, the commission noted they may be able to approve the application at the regular meeting without the applicant needing to attend the meeting. In response to the commission feedback, the applicant has provided an image and a following information link regarding the proposed Spartan Junipers. So staff recommends approval of application HR 230604 223 West Beach Old Boulevard. Um, as submitted with any clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval of prior issues of the certificate. And that recommendation is based on city code 3116.13, standing for site improvements, letter A. Thank you. What would the applicant like to add? <clears throat> no, nothing. Sure. Discussion. Uh, Straightforward straight to good. me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, Right. Yeah. Regarding HR 2306 214 223 West Beach Wall Boulevard, uh, I move to approve the application as noted. Second. Okay. Have any motion and a second? Is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extension motion passes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Moving on to case number five, 2290 North High Street. Good evening. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? I do. Wonderful. If you could state your full name and association with the property for record. Bradley Blumenshaw, I'm the architect. Wonderful. Thank you. Jack. Okay, this application for 2290 North High Street is for landscape and hardscape. The proposal is to replace and lower the existing CMU retaining wall along East Oakland Avenue, to repair and clean the remaining retaining walls along East Oakland Avenue, and to remove the existing brick retaining wall along North High Street, three grade high street yards to match the adjacent properties, and adjacent sidewalks may need to be removed and installed as part of that process. So the retaining wall installation date is unknown. It does appear in the 1958 photo. At the June business meeting, the commissioners present note that the Northwood Park District was designed with a park like setting and that returning the sight lines would be in keeping with this original intent. The commissioners asked what kind of plantings will be put back after regrading, noting that sometimes the slope bonds can be difficult to mow. The staff recommendation is to recommend approval of application HR 230605. At 2290 North High Street, as submitted with any clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of the certificate. And that recommendation is based on the city code 316.13 standard term site improvements, uh, specifically letter A, as well as the standard spell alteration 316.11 number 12, and the HRC guidelines for historical plants and landscaping. Would you like to add anything? Um, no, I think that pretty well covers it. As, as far as the landscaping we propose on Pine Street, 
it's just going to be grass to match the adjacent properties. The uh, management company that maintains the lawn, they manage the adjacent properties too. So I don't think mowing is going to be too much of an issue. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I like that you're preserving the some of the more important key elements, for example, those corner pieces. So, you know, the things you can't preserve, you're preserving the walkways and steps and that kind of thing. So, I think it looks good. And if, okay. if anything, I think it's important to note on this because we get retaining wall requests all the time. If this is an example where the precedent is there's elements and documented existence of wall and wall components dating back historically in photos. Yeah. And just it's a known entity. It's not a I just like to rework my lawn and put in a wall now today right. in year 2023. So yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, okay. Make motion um, for HR 2306 or 15 Street um, to approve as presented. Wonderful. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Put okay. on this way with a second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Specifically, again, for record, if you could just note that this was documented or, or the, the case so here specifically it. because of the aggressor of the retaining wall. Thank you. Good stuff. Moving on to 882 Brighton Road. If you could each raise your right hand. Do you both swear to tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? I do. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And if you could both state your full name and association with the property for record. Edward Lane, owner. Okay. Owner. Randy Clinger, owner. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Jack. Okay, this is an application for gate 2 Brighton Road. This proposed areas can be parascape uh, and structured. So the proposal is to remove an existing pergola and replace with a new cedar pavilion. The new pavilion would have shingles and bridge crack to match the house, which are GA and GAF slate line. Uh, it would have a fireplace with wood storage. The fireplace column would be clad in stone. And there would be relay of existing bluestone patio and walkway and an expansion of that patio with 90 square feet of patio adjacent to the proposed pavilion. At the June business meeting, the commissioner's president noted, or sorry, at the last Maybe this is me. President Donald, we hope to drive stack stone from your proposed for the chimney have suburban appearance and have asked the applicant if they could look into a mortar set stone veneer or a brick veneer to matter, better match the base area within the neighborhood. Uh, and then suggested possibly limestone or sandstone veneer could also be compatible. The commissioners asked if any gutters or light fixtures are proposed and noted if gutter and light fixtures will be proposed, that they should be included in the drawings uh, and cut sheets for light fixtures. Commissioners asked the applicant to clarify the proposed roofing shingles as the renderer had the scaled roof shingles, whereas the drawing did not, and wants to confirm this was proposed. The commission asked the asked staff if the applicant has received some zoning feedback, uh, which is yes. And the commissioners note that they are not opposed to the overall concept. So, in response to the commission feedback, the applicant has submitted additional materials, including a revised drawing showing gutters and height measurements. A shingle spec confirming that the proposed pavilion shingles will be the GAF slate line through tab shingles and the weathered slate and will not be scalloped. And submitted photos of a physical sample from the existing home. It looks like brought a physical sample as well for review. So staff recommends approval of application HR 2306016A2 Brighton Road as submitted with any clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate. And that recommendation is based on the city code 306.13 standards for site improvements, letter A, and the standards for alteration 306.11, number 12, and the GHRC guidelines for patios and decks. Wonderful. Thank you. If, uh, what would the applicant like to add? It looks like you've made some changes. You took some input from us, which we're thankful for to start with. So, but what would you guys like to add? Actually, the the changes uh, Mr. Henry recommended turn out to be better for us. I think we like the stone choice, the second stone choice. For the exact one. I like the stone choice better than this There you go. Perfect. This is good. Stone is good. Yes. Yeah. We're hoping we're going to do it brick to match the house, but that's okay. <laughs> you, that brick would be hard to come by. So, so the only things I guess if, if maybe 
we could consider as follow up notes. I think it would be important to pick your mortar selection and just show us that that matches and that gets related to staff at some point. If indeed this is proved, could we? Well, when you say matches, he matches the house. Matches the house, right. yeah, or is compatible with the stone, you know. Mm -hmm. I would just hate to see some color that just sticks out like sort of um, and that's an easy thing to do. That's a small list item. Our mortar on a carriage house doesn't match the mortar on our Oops. our house. Well, pick whatever is going to match with the stone and just give us precedent. I mean, tell whatever. Them. Like you've got a really good example of yeah. the stone next to the foundation. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just that color, that gray, whatever. Yeah. Sure. It melts the foundation. Mortar. Perfect. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you can just give staff the details of what that color is. Um. I make a motion to approve as submitted. <clears throat> with that one item follow up? With the mortar. Is there a second? Second. Perfect. Having a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Nice project. Yes. Moving on to uh, conceptual application now, HR 23060719 West Royal Forest Boulevard. Hello. How are you? Good. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell, you, tell the truth in your testimony before the commission this evening? I do. Wonderful. And state your full name and association with the property record. Tammy Lynn Morrison. I'm a home, homeowner with my husband, Chad. Wonderful. Thank you. This application for 19 West Royal Forest Boulevard is proposing hardscape alterations, including widening the existing asphalt driveway, replacing the existing concrete garage entry apron, and replacing and widening the existing pathway along the north elevation of the house, as well as replacing the existing concrete front porch area to match the existing condition. At the June business meeting, the commissioners noted that they understand the goal of replacing the asphalt driveway has been deteriorated. The commissioners present noted that any measured scale drawing will be needed to clarify some questions regarding measurements in the application description. The commissioners asked what the plan is to address the pool of rainwater as having some surface will push the rainwater further to the yard. The commissioners noted that the applicant may be able to re-pitch the concrete corner shown on the page three of the application materials rather than having to replace, which could also save her cost. In response to commission feedback, the applicant notes that most of the pooling water is from the loop at Columbus work that's in progress. Um, so they believe once that work is done, the pooling will also cease. The applicant notes that the concrete corner of the front porch has sunk and is pulling away from the house, and they would like to replace the simultaneously address the deteriorating face of the front porch. Um, so at the time, this was the conceptual applications. We cannot have yeah, the uh, measure of scale drawing. We did just receive the mails. The measure of scale drawing. Uh, so it's going to have the application materials, which is not in time to send out for the updated agenda. That's extremely helpful. That, that drawing. Right. And since this was a conceptual application, uh, the recommendation was that the commissioners offer design feedback that can be utilized in the future to refine the proposal for the pre HRC meeting. In general, the basis for the staff recommendations. Are the city code standards for site improvements 3106.13 and specifically letter A, as well as the standards for alteration 3106.11 for page 12. Would the applicant like to add? Um, yes, what I'd like to add is those areas are deteriorating, um, places are crumbling. The porch where it meets the sidewalk has a large hole where you know, chipmunks are crawling in and out. Um, our front sidewalk, we're, we have, there's a lot of cracks. We're having problems with ants. Mm -hmm. And the driveway is too narrow. When two cars are parked side by side, no one can get out and be standing on the driveway. You're getting out onto grass. And then, of course, in wintertime, you're shoveling on top of the grass to get have a clear path to get out of your car. How many cars do you normally park in the driveway? We have five. <clears throat> Four, four of us live there. So my husband and myself and our two children are in college. Uh, an American family. <laughs> <laughs> we do quite a bit of shuffling of cars around. But even when guests come, they are to get in and out of their car on either side of the driveway because it's so narrow, they have to stand in the grass. Uh, I, I, I don't have any problem. I, I do appreciate the uh, existing Shades to hold the front porch. I think it's a really nice 
contributing element to the house and that you're going to replace that in kind, which is really good. Mm -hmm. You're going to do a little more swoop with the walkway from it, but I, I have no problem with the needs. To me, this just says, you know, you're, you're leaving the mall stream and the planting's the same. You're increasing the drive a little bit and you're increasing the sidewalk a little bit for some usability factors to replace some aging stuff that's documented in photos. Mm -hmm. uh, how does staff feel if we move this out of conceptual and just right to approval? I think that'd be okay now that we have the um, site plan to clarify. Okay. Would my fellow commissioners be Is that okay with you? That's wonderful. Okay. Yes. Can I just to confirm you're not removing any existing vegetation as part of the no we're not. I think that's good to everything staying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there's a motion that maybe just clearly makes this a full approval rather than conceptual, I think we could entertain that based on the current range of mouse Okay. Sure. Okay. HR 23-06-19 West Royal Boulevard. Uh, I move to a to a full approval of the plans as originally submitted as conceptual. Would that work? Sure. Second. Having a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Any other item staff has any concern over? No. No. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Project. Thank you. Thank you. Have Thank a you. great evening. Oh, you don't come back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Going on to. We do have the old business set up. Great. Okay. And I'm going to that real quick. If the applicant for the old, or somebody representing the applicant for the old business set, microphone. Sorry. That must be you for the. What do you hear from uh, today, sir? Uh, 39 East Northwood Avenue. <laughs> I think it's incorrectly listed as an approved application. I'd love to keep it that way if you want to, but uh, Sarah Thompson, owner. Is that a staff approval? No, that's not staff approval. No, I, I know it. it's listed under the staff approval, but it's not even our concept. It's not even our issue. So. 39, you said 39 East Northwood? 39 East Northwood, yes. Okay. Sarah is, Thompson, owner. It is listed under the GMS. Wait, six. Agreements. Hold on. It is, is listed. Sarah, it's not even listed. Is it open? Is it, this is what I get. Get open some stuff. Oh, th that is for uh, modification of windows. So to modify existing double hung windows on the third floor um, to operate as casement windows. So that was staff approved for that. Um, and we're here on the roof issue. You asked me to come back from last uh, month with some additional information. Is that uh, information before you, or can we bring that up? Or am I? I don't have that information. No, so that would be submitted to staff, and then we'll put it on just like before with the application materials. So it'll all be digital. Oh, I was, I'm sorry, when I, we exchanged emails and I said I thought I was on the agenda and I'd come back to try and address those questions, so I'm not on the agenda. No, I'm sorry, I think there must be a misunderstanding. Okay, I'll look at that email again. Um, so is it tabled again, or where does that application stand in limbo? Because you did ask me to come back. Yes, yeah, so the application was continued at the last hearing, so any information, just, you know, please submit that to staff, and then, you know, we'll put you on the agenda. There's still time for... Uh, to submit for next month. Okay, great. Because he's got a chance. Um, I think the deadline's June 23rd, so a good amount of time. Um, if I could add, okay, yeah, can we can we pull at least the case up? Just yeah, we'll look at last month's. So we'll pull it up if we can discuss slightly. Or do you want to just add something? And if we clarify it now, maybe we don't have to have another another trip. Or well, actually, <laughs> um, what I was hoping to do this evening was ask. Um, and I don't know if this, this is just a, a general dialogue then. From what information I had, my, as applicant, I'd ask the uh, commission to approve with a timeline for right. replacement. Uh, based on information um, Ms. Lehman, I guess, obtained from city attorney, that's no longer an option, even if it was. Mm -hmm. So respecting that, that puts you in the position of, I'm not going to ask you to approve something without a timeline to remove it. Um, Leaving the two other questions which were raised. One is the commission able to table things for extended period of time in order for my client to basically raise the funds to replace we, it. We can so we, we can keep 
we can keep continuing an application so long as you are a in constant contact with the city and progress you're working towards progress on a submission or a resolution and generally we've let it be on there three times i think before just removing the application i'm sorry three times three times. generally okay the... um and trying to and that certainly is helpful um trying to think uh, creatively if my client either the commission were to reject the application and they were denied economic hardship if they applied for approval to replace the roof with a, a compliant shingle basically what should have been done the first time and the commission would like what is the timeline for for that approval a colleague i was speaking to a colleague who said generally that approval is good for a year and that it can be extended so that's correct so typically that would be a staff approval um, and then once you receive that approval the approval is good for one year and then as long as it hasn't been too long of a time like you know more than a few years the approval can be renewed once more so you could uh, proceed we have two years yeah well i i think if we if you're willing to table it till next month and i talked to my client if if my client can get a year without stressing the system trying to work get right. too creative i think we may end up just withdrawing the application submitting a new one and knowing we'll have one to two years to get this yeah if you have a pre-approved shingle from a pre-approved shingle list yeah. and it has the ridge roll detail and anything that you're staff, in. It, it, they're going to staff approve it if, if, if you afford shingling over this existing because i don't think it needs to be a tear off does it for the city code? Or reshingle over as long as there's not too many layers. So if there's just right. one layer that could be the, well, and I want to you know, check with the roofer to make sure what Yeah, my my client is already talking to yeah. contractors so I can make sure they consider that if it's possible to reduce cost. Um well that's that's great. I, I think that so okay. even though I appreciate you talking out with me with not on the agenda. Um, but I think that's probably the workaround we're going to end up pursuing. Right. So thanks for your I'm, time. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm not telling you that you can do that. I'm telling you you can explore that. Yeah, I, knowing, <laughs> it's a, knowing it's an option, okay. if it's good for a year, I know you're not committing to we're extending not recommending it. it, but that's how some things work. Okay. Well, that is how it, uh, yeah, you can, you do have a year and you can, so that is how it, uh, the approvals go. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving uh, on to item of old business, um, 1578, 1580 Bride Road. And by, by the way, just for clarity, staff, you will at least enter in our months that we just had this transaction because we are on this property. Yeah, so I, yeah, I'm going to have that maybe under public forum, but some okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, we could consider this an item, maybe an item of the public forum. Okay. <laughs> We're amenable, I think, here. Can we bring up historical photos and go ahead and pull that stuff up if you don't mind. Of what? Of this application previously. I think it's, it's is it up here? If you if you look at the file, you're gonna find out there you'll you'll see what the issues are pretty quickly. I think on this one. Oh, for um the old business application? Yeah, it's kind of like it. Okay. Yeah, this is um 1578, 1580 Brian Road. Um, so, an application to approve a new rear porch was approved in March of 2022, and the application was renewed recently of this year. Um, so, the reason why it's old business is there are a couple of things that don't quite match the original for that approval. Uh, that includes the concrete piers at the Northwest and Northeast Porch Foundation and the installation of final pad wood windows instead of the window choice from the approved windows list. Um, and I neglected to make a staff um, report for this one, but our recommendation generally, uh, the biggest concern would just be the windows, and so our recommendation would be either to use the windows that were approved or a different selection of the approved windows list. So go, go back to the drawing real quick. You had the section drawing up, the original drawing. I, I'm not kind of bothered by the remnant of the, the footer. One of the, one of the things I just want to point out is it really was in their original drawing. It is it is here. There's the circular here, right? It's there. It was shown here. It didn't quite end up exactly as what's executed in the field. 
they looks like they basically brought that face trim down a little bit, just had the notch around it. I don't know that I have heartburn on how it. So maybe they grind the edges off that circle. So well, and then I just wouldn't even touch it. Yeah. If they repair the hardscape or the driveway or the sidewalk at some point, or rework the lawn or one of the corners, I think has grass or mulch around it, and like just they just bring a couple extra inches of. Yeah. Top dump with <laughs> topsoil and sprinkle some seed. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> kind of like over, over time, they'll solve that. But the yeah. window thing, you know, we don't want to set a precedent on that. Yeah. We have the approved list of windows. Just, they agreed to it. They didn't do it. They got to change those windows. It's sad. So should we break this into an A and a B? Um, just because I'm like, this is this is easily solved with planting grass yeah. on one corner and the other corners is what it is. So they. I think we're going to do that. How do you guys feel about it? I don't feel about it. And aesthetically, it should be done. Well, more roughly, I think so. Well, no, because if you we've got windows and we got right, we're, we're, I can go, I'm not going to vote for that window. Oh, okay. Because that window is yeah. not the window that we approved. Yeah. You put in a window that that's not on the approved list, and that and then he agreed to put a different window in, and then he. Switch that, so I'm not going to vote. Sure, I was I suggesting that. I agree with all the other things. That, but that's why we should do an A to B. But I will vote for allowing him to keep those. What What is uh, okay? So are we just saying this is deviating from what was approved? Yeah. Because of how the trim is interacting, is that the main? Yeah. Because everything else rates a little lower. It's the window. Yeah. Itself. In the section drawing, it does actually look. Yeah, like they followed yeah. that drawing. Yeah, had, just had the ground the just two inches higher and the trim just flushed out. I mean, it does look odd, but that's more of an opinion. Right. Um, yeah, I think this one's not the issue as well. I'm turning. Right. Right. So it's that's the window. Right. So that's why they okay. end up being because then so, it's so a quiet, right? Yeah, it's actually the window. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, win the window, the biggest concern is this. we have the mitered corners, I believe, and and that doesn't become correct. So there's a couple of different differences, differences that when we do need for window improvement, it's like the actual sort of window detailing and dimensions corners. Mm -hmm. And and as I as I understand it too, this is this is the correct manufacturer for the window, just the wrong window model. I think that might be the case. They might have gone with you know the same window manufacturer. So I think it was like a Marvin that might have been originally part of the original approval. And then maybe just go with a different that's not the list. So, so the basis for not approving the windows, you know, again, if, you, if you're intending to vote now, it's always great to document. Oh, well, because it's not the window that we approved, and it's not on the approved list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we have any mitered windows on the approved list. At least and when we were putting together that approved list, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, my understanding is this window is. is not only not the window that, that was agreed to, but also that it's not on the approved list. Right. I mean, and he just substituted another window on the approved list. Well, then I think I could support that because I would have supported that to start with. Any yes. window on the approved list, I'll support. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But agreed. Agree. Yeah. So this is kind of important. This is in my world. Yes. Yeah, so why are we here? Code this was that. originally, I think, a code violation, and then it came for approval, and it was granted approval. Um, but then code enforcement is checking up, you know, just trying to close out the case. Oh, back through. And, yeah, okay. exactly. Just okay. checking that things match what was approved. Okay, thank you. And just from a process standpoint, also, it's a, it's, do we, it's a precedent, right? That, before we go, yeah. so do we want to give the applicant a chance to say, yeah, but the right one goes back in there, do we want to just... That's so that that is a good question for staff. Do you, I mean, the applicant actually asked us to say reconsideration of the window, or or is it we just don't make an action on the window and it's just not code compliant? Uh, we hope this. I think the applicant, you know, they Rivers pointed out that uh, the window does not match, so they are asking for that consideration. Um, since they are not in attendance today, I would recommend perhaps continuing that portion of the application given the time. So let's continue the whole thing and get a man. I think if we tell them, hey, it's the wrong window, we'll stay there. You know, I don't want to go backtracking and have yeah. to read butcher this. Okay. You could That's communicate okay. that to it. Right? Yes, yeah, so yeah. I'll commission feedback yeah. and then the continuation. Okay. And the importance of considering the other windows. I'd like to make a motion to continue this to the July meeting. 
There's a motion. Is there a second? I said. Uh, oh. Sorry. Should I make a second? But I don't have a second. Has... No, no, go ahead. I was going to... There's a second. Okay, so there's a motion and a second. Further discussion. Yeah. Uh, I, I am noticing one other thing regarding the uh, trim uh -huh. at the base. It seems to be touching the ground in a way where it's. I, I don't know if this is just the picture, but it, it looks like it's going to be absorbing water potentially rotting the way it's sitting there. So I don't know if that's why that was brought to our attention. You can see it here on the other corner as well. It seems pretty prevalent where it's, um, there's even another one, page 10. Oh boy. So I think over time that is gonna rot. Uh, like two years. Yeah. And and so I don't know if maybe that's why that was brought to the attention because it's not part of that. So maybe we step okay. on the ground. Yeah. Well, but then that's a modification of the original, I guess their original design, right? I mean, if they want to replace the wood trim every couple of years. I, I've I've seen porch skirts come down to the ground before. They're they're just usually really good old lumber, not very fine. Stewards will bring it that way. Well, it's it, on the drawing, it looks like it's held off the ground. And I don't, I mean, it seems like we're maybe splitting hairs here, but I, <clears throat> I think your point's valid. Okay, what was the deal? Yeah. Did we vote? We're, we're, yeah, I, I, I think all these issues we need to raise when he comes in. Right. I think he needs to come in and do it. And if you don't mind, at least, um, I mean, put it out there that we discuss these things. And yes, I, I, I do think there was a there was a valid question about um, going to page six. I don't think this was a. Uh, it's all right. Hey, let the applicant talk to us about it. I'll go up into the right hand corner. We might have to move our yeah no. viewer skate with them. Yep, there it is. is. There is it is. That pipe hanging out there. That yeah, it seems like a, there's a drain line right there. Yeah, okay. the clean it. What, what's going on there? Did code enforcement have a list of things that they were concerned about, or just basically the windows and siding hurt? I don't believe the drain pipe was mentioned. Okay. So okay. It wasn't like a formal list. It was confirming does this match? Does it not? All right. Well, maybe let's stick it. If we notice things that don't match, you can certainly ask about the applicant about it. Maybe again, just clarify for us so that you don't understand it completely. I think around their little peer foundation mm -hmm. caissons or whatever we want to call them. I mean, they could like go back and repair the concrete on the lawn and maybe throw grass and mulch down or whatever on the side that has some landscaping and dress over it or make it pretty. Really yeah. The only thing that is noticeable about the sidewalk is the step down right there. And that's why you see it. You wouldn't even notice it. It, it just is what it is. Yeah. Okay. okay. And you're right. The drawing it was right there. It just, it just looks a little more noticeable than what the drawing set shows. Right. Okay. We have to problem. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Case continued. Any other things on the agenda for this evening, Jack? No, that is the complete agenda. Okay. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. We are adjourned at 5.48 p.m. Thank you. Nice work, everybody. Hey, guys. Hey, do you want to make sure that you get this?